Since at its core, SharePoint is about information, then it's kind of important to know about lists and libraries. Understanding lists and libraries will help you work more smoothly through all of the many features that SharePoint offers. In order to do so, you of course need to understand what lists and libraries are, the similarities and the differences. You need to know how to add and edit list items, how to subscribe to RSS feeds, and create alerts for list activity. Being able to sort and filter lists using ad hoc features is also useful in making the information itself more useful to you. In doing so, being able to change your view of the data to meet your specific needs will also be helpful. And being able to use the new timeline view for tasks is really useful. Working with lists in a view called the quick edit mode is another new feature that can save you a lot of time and energy. Being able to export lists from SharePoint back to Excel so that you can further manipulate it is a tool that a lot of people find useful. And of course, on occasion, deleting and recovering SharePoint items is something that you will need to know as well. Why do you need to know all of that? Well, because lists are the core of data in SharePoint. While data can be displayed in many different ways, the elements of lists are at the core of being able to create, understand, manipulate, and use SharePoint. You will access information in a variety of ways, probably both as a contributor and as a consumer of information. But in order to do so, and to do so efficiently and know what your options are, understanding the data will allow you to more easily create, edit, and retrieve it effectively. One of the most common things everybody needs to do with data is to sort and filter. Basically, putting it in an order and filtering out what you do or don't need to see is an important skill to make SharePoint useful and meaningful. It would be nice, I suppose, if all we ever did was add information, but sometimes we do need to delete it. And unfortunately, because we're human, sometimes deleting information is an accident and we need to know how to recover it. So deleting and recovering items is useful using the recycle bin. And lastly, knowing how to configure SharePoint to notify you when items are added or changed helps ensure that you don't miss any important updates and you don't spend endless hours skimming through various sites, lists, and libraries. If I had to narrow it down to the one thing everybody had to know who used SharePoint, that would probably be to answer the question, what exactly is a list? A list in SharePoint is where all of the information is stored. It's that simple. Lists are dynamic. Items can be added, edited, and deleted. They also can be sorted and filtered. So in many ways, it's probably like other data that you've used in spreadsheets and databases. This is simply going to be in a different interface that hopefully is a little more consistent, a little more simplified, and of course is available for everybody without any specialized software. Well, okay, if we can already do this stuff, then why do we need it again? Well, the benefits are numerous. When we compare especially the use of SharePoint over something like Excel spreadsheets, a lot of the advantages are really obvious. For example, it's difficult. Now it can be done, but it's difficult to have multiple people working in the same Excel worksheet at the same time. Multiple people can work in the same list at the same time in SharePoint. The list doesn't get locked if someone else has it open or is using it. And I know you've all experienced this, usually at the end of the month or the end of the quarter or some other deadline, 15 different people need to be in the same Excel spreadsheet, and everybody's running around the office trying to figure out who has it open because nobody else can use it. They have it locked. Everybody else can only open it read-only. That issue is completely resolved by using lists in SharePoint. In addition, lists can easily be adjusted, meaning you can sort it, you can filter it, you can also even work with the structure itself by adding and removing fields, much more easily, much more simply than worksheets. What I really like about lists, though, is no matter what the specific data, all lists work the same way. So instead of learning how to use 15 or 20 different spreadsheets, you only need to learn how to use lists once. Once you know how to add, edit, delete, and recover items, you can do so from any SharePoint list, no matter what type of content it contains. So now that you have an idea what a list is, what does a list contain or what is it made up of? Well, the list elements are actually very simple. All lists are composed of two components, columns and views. Now, before I get a bunch of emails from the technical people out there that are going to correct me on all the different settings and things, I want to clarify, we're keeping things simple here. Lists do also have a variety of settings, but when we're trying to understand them and we try to say, what are they made up of? Really, it's just columns and views that we're concerned about. In order to work with the settings, you must have some level of administrator or owner permissions. So again, this course is all about users. 
And as a user, you can work with columns and views, not so much settings, so we're not going to talk about the settings here. As a list user, you have access to all of the tools available from the ribbon in order to add, edit, delete, and recover items. And those are the things that you need to work with the contents of the list itself. So let's talk a little bit more about these wonderful, amazing things that are going to hold our data, and those are primarily the columns. This is where data is actually stored. If you think about a spreadsheet, you'll be in good shape because really, these are a lot like spreadsheets or database tables if you're more comfortable. Columns can also be called fields or metadata. And again, there are technical differences, but we're not going to go there. So if you want to refer to them as columns, fields, or metadata, for our purposes, all three of those things mean the same thing. Those are the small areas into which we store data in SharePoint. Another way to think of them is that a column contains categories of data, like first names, or phone numbers, or total values, or invoice numbers, something like that. It's not a concept that should be completely new to you. Most of you have worked with this type of setup, usually in spreadsheets. All of the columns also have a data type associated with them. In other words, each of these columns can either hold text or dates or numbers. This simply helps us ensure that we get consistent data put into each of the columns. It makes data entry easier, and it also allows SharePoint to know what to do with it. Some columns may be required, others may be optional. If a column entry is required, it will have an asterisk after its label. This is something that's pretty common. You've seen it on the internet. Any field with an asterisk must be filled in. If it doesn't have an asterisk, you're welcome to leave it out. When you look at a list, one of the ways that you might see it is in the standard view. In the standard view in the screenshot, we can see the columns for this particular task list. They include things like title, assigned to, status, priority, due date, percent complete, and the task predecessors. The second element that we work with with lists is something called a view. And as you can probably imagine, a view is how the columns are displayed on screen. How do we actually see this? There are several different types of views. They include things like a standard view, like we just saw a sample of in the prior slide. You can also have a calendar view that, of course, looks like a calendar. There's a Gantt chart view and some other views that we'll be exploring when we actually look at the SharePoint lists. Views do four basic things. And again, this is a simplification, but most people want to know about these things. Number one, they designate which list fields or columns will display on screen, because we're not always going to see all of the columns when we first open the list. As far as useful things go, views also sort, filter, group, and total our data. It's important to remember that all lists must have at least one view. Most lists actually have multiple views, things that make sense, and they're already built in so we don't have to work with them ourselves. They simply come with a template for the list. Here, we can see how we'll be able to access views when we're using SharePoint, either by clicking or tapping on categories of views at the top of the list or by using ribbon options. When we talk about lists, we know that every list must have at least one view. Most lists will have multiple views, but every list also has a default view. That's the view that first opens when you open the list. Every list has one default view, but it can only have one default view. In addition, there are some categories of views. Everyone can see and everyone can use something called a public view. Public views are usually created by administrators. One person creates it, everybody gets to use it. In addition, we also know that you can create your own personal views. Personal views are created by an individual. The important difference is only the person who created a personal view can see that view. Only the person who created a personal view can use that view. Public views, on the other hand, can be seen and used by anybody who has access to the list itself. The thing that I really get excited about when I talk about lists is that this is the core of SharePoint. And if you can understand that all data is stored in lists and libraries, all lists and libraries are made up of columns, and all lists and libraries have views, then everything just kind of falls into place and gets a little bit easier. Instead of thinking you have hundreds of different things that you need to remember, you really just have some basic, common, core concepts. So we've talked about lists. What about this library thing? We'll tackle that topic and a few others in part two.